All right, welcome back to uh, the Mad Dog Masterclass. This was filmed uh, a bit later. It's uh, something I hinted about uh, doing, and it has nothing to do with flying the Mad Dog this time. We're looking at how to uh, package properly uh, the liveries, because I've gotten a number of requests from people. I've helped a number of people figure this out, and uh, there's a lot of people out there that have no idea what they're doing. It's very cryptic, the information you get from Leonardo. And I figured it out just by trial and error. And it's 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 convoluted. This is one of the things that I, I think is a strike against Leonardo. Uh, there's got to be a better way to do this. But it is what we have. So once you understand what it's doing and, and how it's working, it's not that hard. Uh, also, please uh, ignore my cluttered desktop. I just This is how I work. I deal with it. Uh, but you will notice we've got a beautiful mad dog as the desktop background. This was not done just for this video. I've had this on here for a while. Uh, okay, so w this is going to start. I'm not going to show you how to make a livery for the, the the Mad Dog. I'm assuming if you if you're getting to this stage, you know how to go in and edit the uh, the the files, uh, Photoshop or using Photoshop or whatever uh, to uh, create the livery and do all that. There's plenty of tutorials on uh, on YouTube for how to actually paint aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, in P3D, and explain all those things. So I'm not a. I've done my fair share of livery painting. I, I feel like I do a fairly good job, but I'm slow. I'm not the best at it. I'm not an artist. Uh, so you look at for those people for those things. Uh, but what I can tell you is how to package this thing properly. So we're going to start with what you end up with. And that is basically this right here. So when you, in fact, if you, let's, let's start here. Actually, I think this would be a better place to start to understand the file structure. So first of all, wherever your Microsoft Flight Sim is installed, if you have Steam, then uh, this may be a little bit different. I have no idea. Uh, I'm using the Microsoft Store version and I have placed my community folder on a separate hard drive. Uh, there's, there's other tutorials about how to do that as well. Uh, so mine is on this F drive here, community. This is my community folder. So however you get to your community folder, do that. And yes, I have a ton of stuff in here. Uh, but we're going to scroll down to the Leonardo soft house or software house uh, stuff, which is all prefaced by LSH here. And you're all going to have uh, these first three, uh, the LSH Mad Dog X aircraft. This is the base aircraft, the charts, and then the, uh, the effects. Anything else beyond this will be stuff that you've added or, uh, or either through the livery manager or even just dragging into your community folder. I recommend with the Mad Dog using the livery manager because you'll get all of the other components with it installed correctly so that the load manager can talk to it, figure out what the uh, weight and balance is supposed to be, figure out what the maintenance is for failures and stuff like that. So you do want to go through this process. Uh, you can, I believe, just fly the aircraft if you throw the base, you know, this little guy right here that you're all used to seeing uh, this folder into the community folder. I think it will show up, but you might be missing certain other things and have certain discon disconnects when it comes to using the load manager. So do that at your own risk. <laughs> uh, but here, here's what you're, you're looking for. So we want to look at just a, a livery that we have to, to pick from, because usually you're going to use a livery to make another one and you're just going to copy the textures and then you're going to edit those textures and, and recreate. So for instance, I have uh, this aircraft right here. This is uh, an Alaska uh, November 972AS. Uh, this is, uh, happens to be a livery for an MD-83. Uh, it really doesn't matter. The, the, tech, the paint files are for all three because the fuselage size didn't change. The engines got more powerful. Some avionics changed. Uh, but beyond that, the fuselage, the, the stuff that we need to paint all stayed the same. So... Uh, you can use any of these textures for any of those, but there are some pitfalls to that, and I will explain those in a moment. Uh, but you're going to be looking at this primarily right here is always what you're going to be looking at. You've got a sim objects folder, a layout.json file, and a manifest.json file. And inside the sim objects, you're going to eventually have the texture uh, folder, which has all the custom textures that you're uh, changing, as well as the aircraft CFG. Okay, and this is pretty common for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're used to doing anything like this, you, you probably are aware of this already, and that's all fine and good. But some of the naming conventions are important, and especially where stuff is. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to, if you haven't ever done this before, is when you make a copy. So let's say I just want to make a copy 
of the Alaska. I'm going to make my own livery. So let's just do this. Let's do copy. And I'm going to put it somewhere else just so I don't confuse myself. I'm going to paste it over here and we're going to change the name to, we're going to say, I know they never flew it, but I'm just going to do it for anyway. United and we're going to make up a tail number uh, 999 UA. Okay, so this is going to be our new livery. I'm just going to use this as an example. Um, it's not going to be the example we're also ultimately going to play with because I don't have textures for this. Um, but so in here, if I was to copy all of this back in just by changing the name, I will have a Alaska livery aircraft with the name United. So that doesn't do me any good. So you're going to need to go in here and you're going to need to update your... Um, update your textures, change, you know, repaint the plane. This all happens in here. Make sure all these names stay the same, obviously. Just repaint them and resave them and you're good and you're done. Now here is something where you wanna be, I think it's this one, where you wanna be careful. Yes. So um, you notice in the, in the texture CFG file, your fallback one is X83 because this aircraft was designed to be used with the MD-83. If you wanna use it with the 82 or the 88, you're going to have to pull one of those liveries and make sure your CFG file matches that. Otherwise, you may get some missing textures when it comes in. Because what's happening is not all of the textures for the aircraft are in this folder. Only the ones that pertain to the specific livery. The common textures that are shared through the, by the MD-83 or the MD-82 or the MD-88 uh, rather are uh, in a different in different folders in the main aircraft uh, folder over here and we find those under sim objects airplane cs 83 88 and mad dog x and there are texture files in here that are not in here and so if you're needing those and you don't give it a path back to go find those it's going to say i can't find those textures and and bonk, fail so uh so make sure you take care with that that's one of the first things you want to want to double check is that little guy right there you're going to update all of your all your files here. You're going to want to change the name here to match texture. And we want it to match our file. So that's N999UA. So that should match that now. All right. In the aircraft CFG file, we need to make some changes here too. Now notice base container, M -D Mad Dog 83. If again, you're painting for an 82 or an 88, you're going to want to change this here to either be Mad Dog X or Mad Dog X88. So be aware of that. Uh, under, you don't need to change anything here, but you're going to go through and change anything that's specific to the livery. So the title, you can leave, I would leave this part of it, fly the Mad Dog XMD83, unless of course this is going to be an 82 or an 88, then you can change that. But then change your name, United Airlines, right here. United Airlines and 999UA. You're going to want to change the texture to match. Make sure you don't delete the quotation marks. So you're going to make, make sure this says... November 999 UA. Uh, the description really doesn't matter, uh, but you know, for sake of continuity, you want to say that this is a United Airlines livery for the Mad Dog X. And I'm going to gild that because it's not me, that's somebody else. Uh, <laughs> the last MD80 in the, and he, he even cut it off, so something happened there anyway. Uh, so then just keep coming down looking for anything. So Alaska Airlines, this should change to United Airlines. Uh, let's see, commercial airlines, uh, created by, so in my case, I would put Mustafa. Uh, so that's all, doesn't matter. And then here's the ID. You want to make sure you put this as November 999 UA. And coming down, and then the uh, airline code, the parking code is UAL for United. So we'll do that. And there you go. And then you could, then you would save this. So save the CFG file. There you're good. Okay, so these guys are now set. Okay, so let's back off the next uh, the next level. Now we have this guy here, Mad Dog X Livery Alaska, whatever. Well, it's not Alaska anymore, so we got to change that. So we're going to change this to United. Now this is where this becomes important, and you would think this wouldn't matter, but it does. So United Dash Nine 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 U A. Make sure you don't put the to make don't do this and don't do that. You've got to have the dash there. The software is going to freak out if it's not there. So make sure it looks like this. Use the same convention. Don't try and invent your own way. 
All right, so backing out, backing out, backing out, sim objects, layout, manifest. Now, here's where this becomes important. Because we changed some things here, if we go into the layout.json, and you can do this with a number of different uh, software. I think you can even do this with Notepad. I have it set to use uh, Visual Studio because I have it. I think you can do this with uh, Notepad. Let me just see. Yes, you can. It's a little more unsightly to look at, but you can do it. Um, so, But I'm going to do it in the... Uh, the way I have it because it's easier to read and it's in night mode so I can <laughs> it's nicer for me but here's where we want to be very careful so here is the path to all the, and these are all those livery those textures this is what's telling the software where to go find these so it's important that these match so it needs these all need to be updated to united right here and I think you might be able to, with this software, see how it's highlighting all of them? I think I can do a, like an, a, an all swap. I don't use this software nearly enough to understand what I'm doing with it. But uh, United, and then make this, uh, oops, uh, let's see, 999 UA, right there. Texture dot, and then we got to change it here to November 999 UA. And then the rest stays the same. But so this little part of the text here has to change for every one of these entries. So you got to do that and then save this JSON file to make sure it can do it. Don't worry about any of this stuff over here. You can leave all that alone. Just the paths. So make sure all the paths are now correct based on the, uh, the names you've given them. I'm not going to save this because it's dumb. Uh, manifest.json uh, you really don't need to touch if you don't want to but you might as well so change the title to you know United Airlines you can put your creator name in here so I appreciate it, just Mustafa you can give it a version uh, for the package if you want I guess I just I, I just don't really touch that ever but you can these are the only things I would touch I would touch fly the mad dog and I would touch the uh, the author everything else leave alone in the manifest okay backing out another way so now um, you have this, um, I'm going to, I'm going to switch gears now because this is, I, I want to use something that I know works and I don't want to get too confusing with you guys. So I'm going to delete this now. We're going to pretend that we did that. We, we did United. We got it all done. Yay. Uh, we're moving on to a different one now. This is this continental, uh, 938, uh, Mike Charlie, which is a file I just fixed for a uh, person who messaged me after finding the, the Mad Dog Masterclass stuff. And, uh, I was able to fix this for him. So inside of uh, or so you have this this has your sim this is what this folder right here is what will end up in the um in the community folder eventually so the stuff outside of it though needs to be with it outside of this and you have two files a cfg file another one named for the tail number and an MDA file also named for the tail number. Now, what are these and where do they normally live? Well, let me answer that question. So, in your main Mad Dog aircraft folder here, you have an aircrafts folder with all of these files from the aircrafts you've installed. What these are, this is the, the CFG record for the, the load manager, as well as an MDA file. The MDA file is what tracks the hours on the engines, the oil quantity, the fuel quantity to start, some of the other specifics for the cockpit. Uh, it's going to track the engine hours and cycles for the maintenance side of things. So, so this is where you could actually go in if you wanted to and like really increase the airframe hours, for instance. And the aircraft will have a lot more failures because it will think the aircraft's been flying for 20 years as opposed to what it does when you normally install a livery, it thinks that aircraft came off the factory floor yesterday. So uh, you can do some fun things in here, total hours, total cycles, things like that. But what you want to do is you want to create, just copy this MDA file from a different livery and then update it with any, any pertinent information. So you, if you want to, make sure to reset any engine hours and APU hours to zero. Brakes can go to a thousand. That's the, the max there. Um, Engine oil hydraulic quantities. I would just leave those alone because you can just refill those in the sim and then you're then you're back to normal. Um, same with the battery. You can kind of leave that alone unless it's dead. Uh, but uh, and then come down here. I think there was only one place. Yeah, if you have uh, in ops and failures, you want to update the tail number to be your tail number, not the other tail number that you copied it from. Uh, but anything else you want to edit in here, you can. Just try to make sure you understand what you're doing before you do it. 
Um, the last thing I would uh, do is if, it, if you have an aircraft that you've flown, delete the uh, last flight, last departure, last destination, because it won't be the same as that one. So you want to do that. Okay, so you want to create that MDA file. I'm not going to save it because I don't want to mess with it. But so you'll have those two files there. Again, they're named with the tail number of the aircraft. So at the end, when you're all done, your packet, and by the way, you may have spotted this is wrong. I was messing with this to, to show you guys an example. That hyphen needs to be in there. All right, so when you're all done, this is what it should look like. Your lsh.maddogx delivery dash whatever the name of the airline is dash the tail number folder and that contains your content info. You don't need this, by the way. This is if you have a, a thumbnail, extra thumbnail in there with that. Um, so you might have that, you might not. If it just has sim objects, you're okay too. This is kind of an optional folder. Uh, but the sim objects should have the layout.json updated to match your paths and the manifest.json, again, updated with your information. And then within sim objects, airplanes, again, make sure you've always got the hyphens between everything. And then you should have just a texture dot the tail number and aircraft off CFG, which you have updated already to do this. Now the, um, the CFG that's out here is very similar to the other one, the aircraft CFG. It's actually just the same thing, just missing a few things. So let's, let's compare and contrast for a moment. Something we all learned how to do in school, I hope. <laughs> but so you notice the the tail number CFG, we'll call it, as opposed to the aircraft CFG, is just everything from the flight sim.0 bracket on down. So it's just this. It's an exact copy. So once you've fixed this one, just copy paste over here and and update it. You don't need this stuff right here in the uh, in the tail number one. Okay. Okay, as Mr. Mackey would say. All right, so you've got all that. We're, we're on the right track, we're, we're looking good. Now, here's the tricky part. How to get this into the format it needs for the delivery manager. The delivery manager is looking for a zip folder, okay? So you're going to highlight those three things. Once all of that stuff is done, you can't make changes after you do this. I mean, you can, but you have to go and recreate the zip folder afterwards. So make sure you've done everything you gotta do. Right click, do send to zip. And it's going to zip them. Bada boom, bada bing. Now, what you want to do, though, is you do not want this to be this long name. This is not going to work. You want to make it just the tail number. Okay? So your zip will look like your CFGs and MDAs. So when you open this zip file, the only three things that you should see in this zip file are these right here. There should not be another folder layer. If you open this up and there's another folder before you get to this, you've done it wrong. Don't do that. So you should open up the zip file and immediately you have that main folder there and the two, the CFG and the MDA files, okay? Now, where do we put them? How do we do this from here? All right, so we go to the uh, your user folder. So you're gonna find documents and we're going to Mad Dog X files right there. Microsoft 2020 and liveries. Here's where they live. now. Here's where I'm going to, once again, depart from what we've already done because I want to show you something and the easiest way for me to do this without getting confused myself is to do it the way I'm going to show you right now. So, there are three possible things that can happen when you go to do this and I want you to understand what is happening in each one of those scenarios. The first, the worst case scenario is what I'm going to show you first. So I'm going to take, I have three folders here I created, not okay, okay, and partial okay. <laughs> I'll explain what those mean. So in the not okay, I'm going to take this one right here, I'm going to make a copy of it, and I'm going to put it in the liveries folder. This is an example of if we just highlighted those, made it a zip, and then dragged it in, and did not rename it with just the tail number. Okay, we're on the same page here. If we do that, and we open up the load manager, Right here, this is how we install deliveries, by the way, if you've never done this before. Now, you're going to want to click on the variant you're wanting to install a delivery for. So in this case, this is for the MD83. If I was doing the 82, I would leave it there. If I was doing the 88, I'd do it there. So 83 and deliveries manager. All of the deliveries over here are the deliveries that are in this folder that the delivery manager thinks are okay, based on its limited attempt at installing them so far. You noticed our continental one is not here. We didn't make the list. This is not okay because it has an incorrect title. 
And there's even some in here that have titles that seem correct that aren't on this list, and that's because there's other things wrong with them. But that's fine. Okay, so, oops, that's the first scenario. So if that happens, your first suspect is the following. That the zip folder is not named correctly, or it's missing one or both of these files. That's usually the most likely culprits for a it didn't show up as an option to install delivery period. Okay? So... Now, we're going to delete that one, and I'm going to go show you the partial OK. And I'll explain what this means in a second. So we're going to copy this. This is also a zip file that has the now correct name. And if we look at this, it also has the correct information. But look what I've done. I didn't put the hyphen there. That's the only thing that's wrong with this, by the way. That hyphen's missing. So watch what happens now when we go to do this. Uh, go back. There we are. Okay, so it's in the folder. We're going to open up the, uh, the, the, uh, the what do you call this thing? It's the load manager. MD83, liveries manager. <gasps> it's there. It works. There's the thumbnail. Everything is good. We're, we're all set. Yay, we did it. We're going to put it over here. Yay. Now you got to make sure you apply. Got to apply it. It's going to install. It's going to do things. And it's going to take you back. Now, what you want to do here is you don't want to just go and boot your sim, especially if your sim is like mine and takes five minutes to load, you'll be very sad. You want to go back to the liveries manager and check. Let me make sure I was on E3, yeah, check. Uh-oh, it's not here. And it's not here. This is what I call the load manager eating the file. <laughs> it was enough to install, but not enough to install correctly. This is why I call it partially okay. If this happens, you have to do some work to get it to get it out because you can't just uninstall it. You know, with these ones, you can just hit the other arrow and bring it back out, hit apply, and it'll bring it back out, put the zip file out. So in this case, what you want to do, and this is why you always make copies of this. Do not make the zip and then just throw it in there. Make a copy so you can go back and reference and figure out what's wrong. So we got to go back to our community folder. And we're going to go scroll down, and it's going to be in here. There it is, Continental, right there. And you can see it's missing that hyphen. Everybody else has a hyphen. See, you don't want to be different. As much as we celebrate differences in uh, society, this is one time you don't want to be different. you got to toe the line. So we're going to delete this here. And then we also need to go into the, uh, the main aircraft folder, aircrafts, and pull these guys out. Because it installed those guys. There's the, uh, the MDA and the CFG. You want to delete those. Okay, so now it's like it never got installed. Okay. Okay. So the so we're gonna so it's gone. It ate it. <laughs> now we're gonna load the OK one. And this one I'm gonna copy. And the reason I did these folders is because you cannot distinguish necessarily between which one's which. You notice this one has the hyphen. It's exactly the same as the other one, but it has the hyphen. That is literally the only difference. And we're gonna open up the uh, the uh, manager here. We're gonna go MD83 liveries manager. There it's back. We're going to put that in there. We're going to hit apply. We're going to cross our fingers and we go back to liveries manager. And now it's there. Everything has worked. If you go back in there and it shows up, you're good. If it doesn't show up in this list, what happens is when you go to make changes to that livery specifically, it won't be in this list. But you see now it's there. 93, 938MC. So you can do that there. You can do that for the, the aircraft weekly check. You can do it for the op. Well, that is not for the options for that. But you can do it for the load. All that stuff. So that is the secret. It is naming conventions that are very, very particular. And you have to do them in this order and in this way. And you have to have all those files. And if you don't have them, you are stuck. Now, I'm going to show you one more trick, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is optional. You don't need to do it. You notice none of this has this here that I showed you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the load manager. I'm going to bring a livery out and I'm going to show you what I've done for one of them. Uh, let's see. I think we uh, actually, you know what? No, let me do the 82. I know the 82 has it. Uh, let's do Allegiant and I'm going to look over here real fast to make sure I don't have a bad version of it sitting here. That's going to throw me off later. I don't think I do. No. All right. So Allegiant 418 November Victor. We're going to pull it out. I'm going to apply. It's going to basically uninstall it, but it keeps the MDA file and the CFG files. So if when I put it back, all that data is still there because that's what it's holding all the maintenance data and all that stuff. All right, there we go. 
And we're gonna go look at that one right there. Now, this one has an extra file in here. This has a PNG file. What is this? This is the background for the EFB, the electronic flight bag. So if you wanna create a custom background, you can do that and throw it into right here. Just make sure it has the correct dimensions. I'm gonna see, uh, is this gonna tell me what the dimensions are? No. Uh, what I would recommend doing is going and grabbing the uh, the one that comes with uh, the Leonardo, which I think you can find in the community folder, in the main aircraft folder. When I find it under aircrafts, it should be, I think it's in here. I think, is it the iDavid one? No, that's it. That's I'll tell you. I thought there was, maybe I went through and created these. There's one, so it's somewhere. <laughs> it lives somewhere, and now I'm not sure where it is. Uh, EFB, it might be in here. Uh, this is setup stuff. Where's the background? One of these is the thing. That's the one thing I didn't check before I hit record in the video. No, it's just that thing. Okay, I'm just looking for, let's say background, maybe EFB. Oh, BG, there it is. Aha, there it is. So yeah, so it is in um, resources, EFB, and you're looking for EFB dot underscore BG. And so you can throw this into a, a, a paint program, Photoshop, whatever, and just paint over the top of it and you'll have the right dimensions. It's a P and then save it as a PNG file. So you're gonna put that in with the plane and then that way when you load that up, when you turn the airplane on, it will have, uh, it'll have the thing. If you wanna add it, to an uh, aircraft you've already have existing, you don't want to go and put it back in this thing. You don't have to, by the way. Uh, you can go ahead and create your PNG. You can go down into your main aircraft uh, folder for um, for Leonardo. Go to aircrafts and just throw it in this folder as long as its name is the aircraft you want uh, tail number dot PNG, and it will pick it up. So that's all you got to do. So really easy. But if you want to include it in your livery pack for somebody else, then you got to put it in here. Otherwise, it's not going to install right. So that's the thing. You need those three files. This one's optional. And then from there, you need to make sure you've updated your layout JSON, your manifest JSON. You have updated your uh, name here using all the hyphens, just like everybody else does. Make sure the texture file has the tail number attached to it. Make sure you've updated your aircraft CFG accordingly. Notice this was the MD-82, the base container, Mad Dog X. Doesn't say 83. Okay, something to be aware of. Uh, so make sure you're changing it there and make sure you're changing it here. Because I think it's here too. Yeah, Mad Dog X, texture pink, not Mad Dog X83. Okay, make sure the fallbacks are correct. So you got to do that here and in the aircraft CFG. And, uh, and make sure you make all these changes before you create this guy because you're gonna cop make a copy of this. This should be identical to the aircraft CFG except for the fact that it's missing that other stuff up here. It just is this, okay? So I know it's convoluted. I know it's kind of wacky and it took 30 minutes to explain. <laughs> so that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but that's the only way to do it. And as much as it pains me, that's that's where we're at. So, uh, so make sure again, little takeaways here. If your aircraft doesn't show up here, more than likely your zip file is named incorrectly, and or you're missing one of those two key files in addition to the the main aircraft folder that .mda and the .cfg also named with the aircraft tail number only. Okay, names are important. They must follow that convention. If it shows up in here and you copy it over, and then when you go to look back, it's it's gone, it ate it. That means there is a folder in your structure somewhere that is not following the proper convention, and it's probably missing a hyphen, or there's a hyphen followed by a space or something like that that's freaking it out, okay? Again, it's very important to proofread <laughs> your repaint. Never thought you'd hear that one. Uh, but if it installs here, and when you reopen it, it shows up here, only then are you good and you know it works and you can go in here and it should be in the drop-down list. And if that's the case, when you boot the sim, it should be there. Now, 
uh, whether or not your thumbnail shows up correctly, that's entirely on you, whether or not you did the thumbnail and replaced it. Because if you didn't replace the thumbnail in the texture folder, uh, it's going to show the thumbnail from someone else. So you have to look at the name. You may say United, but it looks like a Continental. Or it may say, which actually United looks like Continental anyway. Uh, it may say United, but it looks like American. Or it looks like Delta. Or it looks like who knows what else. Um, so make sure you update that. that that's That's kind of... Uh, livery creation 101, so I don't feel like that's really applicable here for this tutorial, but there it is. I hope that helped. I uh, Again, this is going to be the, I think, well, you know, I'm not going to say last. It, 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 you never may be the last. Either they could come out with some update and we do another video for the Mad Dog Masterclass. It's been very well received. I, I do want to say thank you, you guys, for all the kind words I've gotten on that. I put a lot of effort into this uh, into this uh, master class for this aircraft uh, overall, and uh, it's it's been very well received. I, I really thank you. It's it's made me very happy. So uh, very happy to do it and be helpful. Again, uh, check me out on Twitch uh, during the weeks. Um, Twitch.tv forward slash Mustafa. You can check out the social media. Social bar is up there, and um, uh, and then obviously I've got my YouTube videos, which you're watching right now. So you already should know that one. But uh, you can also find me on Discord. Uh, there's links in the description below there for my Discord channel. If you need help with this aircraft, if you've got questions, uh, I've been able to help a number of people on YouTube already with questions they had or things that weren't quite uh, explained or glossed over. And uh, that's the place to really get help from not only me, but a bunch of other people that know what they're doing with not only this aircraft, but lots of aircraft in the sim. So if you've got questions about other aircraft in the sim, uh, that may be stuff that I'm familiar with it, then I'm happy to help there too and uh, or point you in the right direction. So love to have you come and hang out with us on Twitch. Love to have you come and uh, join the conversation on Discord. Uh, but uh, keep leaving those likes and uh, subscribes on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you on the next one.